how are you? Welcome to CUO, where we promote empowering information about Africa and Africans and correct misrepresentations of Africa and Africans. Today, we're looking at the whole act of disease in Africa. By that, I mean promoting diseases, infections in Africa, and why that is a perverse economy. There's, there's a perverse incentive that drives the urge, the need to present Africa as besieged by diseases. In my decade and a half supporting communication and advocacy for fundraising for Africa, I have been at odds with colleagues who promote, who promote worst case scenarios for Africa with the rationalization that it would bring in humanitarian funds faster from Western donors. I've taken the stance that this would be doing harm because promoting exaggerating a, a crisis because it triggers funding from the West does harm to the economies of those countries that we are hoping to, to support because humanitarian needs must be based, response must be based on humanitarian needs, accuracy of humanitarian needs. And one area of supported Africa in communicating needs is in the area of disease infection, an area of contention indeed. And one of the clear areas I supported in 2017 was an East African country around the whole issue of acute watery diarrhea or cholera. In 2017, I supported this country to design a communication strategy regarding if to declare a cholera outbreak or to respond to acute watery diarrhea. Now, the government of this country said, we have to do testing on everybody to verify that we have cholera. Cholera is one, is, is one of acute watery diarrhea. So by treating acute watery diarrhea, we're addressing cholera as well. We reviewed the national response plan. We saw that it was the same thing for cholera. So the response, the national authorities were responding appropriately, whether it's cholera or acute watery diarrhea. But international actors were demanding, asking this country to declare a cholera outbreak because there were mechanisms in donor countries in the West, in North America and Europe, that would bring in funding for the response. This is in spite of the fact that the government of this country was already addressing the impact, whether it's cholera, whether it's acute watery diarrhea, the government was addressing it already. But you see, the issue there is that there were no extra funding to administer aid. What some of these international actors were asking for, the reason they wanted cholera declared by this country was because it would generate Western funding in, a, in an amount to administer this funding, basically for institutional survival. But the government of this country recognized that doing that would have some other implications. At the end of the day, we went with responding to acute water diarrhea. It was under my watch. But since I left that country, cholera has been declared a couple of times. Let's look at what we're dealing with today regarding COVID-19. Eritrea has released its final COVID-19 case. It did over the weekend. There were no fatalities in Eritrea. Eritrea responded appropriately and there was no fatality in Eritrea. That was how successful that country was. Madagascar has one fatality from 172 cases. And Madagascar is attributing its success to the development of the national supplement COVID organics, which has been controversial because it was considered not tested enough. But Madagascar says it has cured and appropriately reduced the impact and spread of COVID-19. Tanzania has refuted America's claims that its hospitals are overwhelmed by COVID cases. And in countering that, Tanzania said, no, in fact, we were re recording reduced cases across the country. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has said too that, and has attributed the success in Africa to the swift actions African countries have taken to respond to COVID, COVID, the coronavirus pandemic. And it's and, and he's excited, United Nations Secretary General is actually impressed that the cases, the expected rise in COVID-19 in Africa has not been so due to the swift action taken by leaders across the country, across the continent, in many countries across the continent. But the world remains obsessed with predicting impending doom and gloom about COVID-19 impact in Africa. Rather than highlighting and promoting and leveraging Africa's capacity to address COVID-19 in the continent, which it has demonstrated so far, the world is more obsessed to look in the future. Oh, it's going to be so bad. If it's this bad in these Western countries that are so developed, it must be horrendous and horrible for African countries. 
The report from the West has been gloomy. The gloom centers on the prediction that if Africa is not the worst hit, hit, it is because it is coming. It's going to be the worst hit. The expectation is that Africa will be worst hit because that is the story the world is most comfort comfortable with about Africa. So the scenario already is being projected. The world we have come to know is one where Africa was worst, allegedly was most affected by HIV AIDS, where Africa was worst affected by Ebola. So the expectation is Africa must be worse of, one of the worst play, zone, regions affected by COVID-19. Let's look at the history here, <laughs> the recent history. At the height of the HIV AIDS pandemic, Stephen Langdon, a former Canadian member of parliament, and one time director of the Poverty Reduction Program of the Parliamentary Centre in Ottawa, Canada, noted in an article, The Heart of Hopelessness, that it is hard after the Barcelona AIDS Conference in 2002 not to get caught up in the passionate vision of what the AIDS devastation of Africa promoters call Africa's accelerating catastrophe. The prediction then in 2002 was that by the year 2020, this year, the number of deaths from HIV AIDS, the number of deaths from AIDS in Africa will approximate the number of deaths, military and civilians combined in both world wars of the 20th, 20th century. Please let me emphasize this again. By in 2002, in the height of the whole HIV AIDS prediction on Africa, it was predicted that by the year 2020 this year, the number of deaths from HIV AIDS, from AIDS in Africa will approximate the number of deaths military and civilian combined in both world wars of the 20th century. Yes, AIDS, HIV AIDS did have an impact around the world, including Africa. But the picture was not as unremittingly grim. Many of the alarming numbers, the statistics, are worst case project projections rather than detailed snapshot of what has already come to pass. Why do we have this? Now we have this in COVID-19. We have that same prediction going out in COVID-19 as well. You know, and we had that in Ebola. Ebola was supposed to have ravaged. And in fact, there were many economies that were established across countries like DRC in preparation for addressing the widespread impact of Ebola. Now, I'm not belittling the potential impact of these issues, these diseases and in, in, in pandemics in Africa as around the world. But I'm saying here, Africa is diseased for perverse incentives. The economies that are built on diseasing Africa, building the worst case prediction on Africa, and this is for fundraising. Right now, Africa must be watchful on the increasing enthusiastic and authoritative predictions and projections of worst case scenarios of COVID-19 in Africa. We must be watchful that projection of COVID explosion, explosion in Africa does not become the next resource pool for funding. The damages to the economic outlook of Africa perpetrated by the decision of the, of the continent for funding is not worth it. Hopefully those who help Africa communicate needs for humanitarian funding must realize that they are doing harm if humanitarian presence and communications subsumes development incentives, triggers and support. What is my bottom line? Bottom line. Increased alerts that COVID-19 would explode in Africa and accompanying messaging for the world to help Africa could and most probably would inspire aid charity professionals who perhaps right now are designing creative projects to raise funds from Western-based donors. And sadly, there would be governments in Africa who would be lured with possibly funding so would not verify information and messaging around the worst-case scenario prediction for Africa. Please. Know that this is in a country to attract humanitarian aid, aid affects the economies of the aid recipient countries. When these needs are real and clearly present, yes, we must prioritize interventions to save lives. If COVID-19 is verified that it will have the impact, there are many initiatives, interventions that have taken place in Africa, self-sustaining you know, from Africa that are working. Let's leverage them, promote them. But let's not let COVID-19 become the new resource pool, the new area of perverse incentive through which people will respond. It will be done at the expense of Africa's economies. Thank you.